Welcome back to Tech Yesterday. This is Dark Easy coming back to you guys today with a comparison between TN and IPS panels. Now, I'm also going to, first of all, I'm going to show you guys some tests that I did between these two panels. I have my D, uh, mirrorless DSLR here, and I managed to stop it down to a thousandth, one thousandth of a second. So the results are pretty interesting. And then also, I'll be going on to do some gameplay video and commentary and talk about my Yamakaze monitor and my TN panel and which. I prefer in which situation so anyway let's move on now with the results first okay so here is the first test that we're doing and essentially the monitor on the left is a Korean 27 inch IPS monitor and the monitor on the right is a Samsung 700 D 23 inch monitor now this even though the Yamakasi can go up to 1440p I decided to test both these monitors at 1080p uh, duplicate display from the same graphics card that'll give you a rough estimate of which has better input lag if one does have better input lag than the other essentially this test is not a hundred percent accurate however it is a fairly accurate test and people with like people like me who don't have really expensive equipment uh, can still do these tests for you guys so that's one thing i really like about this uh, test uh, i will put the dis uh, link in the description below where you can download this timer and test it for yourself if you have two different monitors if you want to uh, but it is best compared generally with the crt monitor as well because they have generally considered to have the lowest response times however i just wanted to compare today's um, comparison between ips and tm panels uh, so the ips on the left as we can see here it's it i mean when we first took the i stopped my camera down to one one thousand of a second and we can see here the results were very impressive the ips panel uh did better than the samsung in terms of input lag i mean it beat it by two or three milliseconds that was very impressive i was shocked when I first saw this, I was like, damn. And it is one thing One thing I will note about this particular IPS model, uh, panel is that it doesn't have an on-screen display. So it's basically just directly getting the uh, pulling the image from your graphics card. So that may help with input lag. But I was surprised to find that the IPS 27-inch Korean Special uh, beat the TN panel. And that was just, wow, it really opened my eyes. However, I will say once I did research this a little bit more on the internet, I found out that Samsung panels in the, high, in the competitive gaming scene are not the best TN panels. Apparently, the ASUS panels have better response times. So that's something to consider if you are a very competitive gamer. Uh, one thing you will notice about these tests, so even on this image here, and I'll, talk, I'll do another slide for you guys soon, but is the ghosting. Uh, as you can see on the left, the IPS panel does d exhibit some ghosting, as you can see there with the top and the bottom uh, timers. The, as you can see on the right, the TN panel exhibits virtually nil. I mean, the ghosting, I can't notice any ghosting from this frame. Uh, the IPS panel, though, it, the ghosting is evident. And I will be talking about that a little bit more in my vlog. Uh, one, also one more important thing to note is that the FPS was set to 59.97, I think. Uh, that's the only um, f uh, refresh rate that the IPS panel can run on on my desktop. Uh, so, I, yeah, I mean, it is the TN is at a bit of a disadvantage because it can run at 120 hertz per second. Anyway, let's move on now to the next test. So here's me just booting up Call of Duty Ghosts and I was just firing a gun and I took a shot and as you can see here there's a slight bit of ghosting on the IPS panel. I mean it's definitely not terrible but it is noticeable and I'll talk about, I'll show you guys a test that you can also do um, uh, very soon but let's move over now to the Samsung TN panel. And here's the Samsung TN panel, it, uh, exhibit, it, it exhibits no noticeable ghosting. So the first test that you guys can do is load up a game called Heroes in New Earth. And this is basically, you can see if your monitor is ghosting. Now the YouTube video is only 30 frames per second, so it's a little bit choppy. You may not be, may not be able to read it from this uh, YouTube video. But if you see your characters moving here, you should be able to read this text very clearly, both your username and the character's name. On my TN panel, I can read this text clearly. However, when I switched over to my IPS panel, I couldn't read the text that well. It was 
pretty blurry, so this to me was showing that the ghosting effect was taking effect even in a game like Heroes New Earth, which isn't as fast paced as an FPS game. So um, I do love this game as well, it is a great game for testing uh, CPU overclocks as well. So this leaves the question of which is better for what and when should you choose the o one over the other. Uh, me owning both, I'm pretty much, I like them both. They both have their good points and they both have their bad points. I'll talk about the IPS panel first, the Korean Yamakaze. Now, the good thing about it is it was relatively inexpensive. It was only 300 and something USD delivered to my door. And it was absolutely, it's a beautiful display. I mean, everything, I pretty much preferred the IPS panel for everything other than gaming. Uh, and, you know, when you're watching movies, movies are beautiful. When you're watching, when you're doing work, this is the best thing. When I'm actually making videos for you guys, the IPS mon monitor just gives me so much more screen real estate. Not to mention the colors and it look a lot better as well as the image looks a lot more crisp. Uh, however, when we switch over to gaming, this is when I started to notice ghosting. As soon as I booted up the monitor, I noticed that even in a game like Heroes of New Earth, ghosting was pretty evident. And now this is considered one of the better Korean panels. I mean, it's got no, in pretty much it's got no, like little to no input lag, and it doesn't have an on-screen display. So I think the technology is still, uh, still needs a little few refinements, but if they can get rid of the ghosting, then I definitely will be moving to IPS for gaming, but as it stands, I'm still going to be um, on my TN panel for gaming, mainly because of the ghosting, and that's it. Even though the res, the 1440p res looks better, and I've got more screen real estate, I just like to game on my 1080p at 120 hertz. I just think the image looks so much more crisper and the motion's more fluid. And I would, pr and I'd rather have that than 1440p 60 hertz. So ultimately, though, when it came down to working and doing everything other than gaming, I preferred the IPS panel. So it's it's kind of like hmm, it's a toss up. And ultimately, it comes down to um, w what do you spend the majority of your time doing on a PC? If you spend the majority of your time gaming, then I would probably go with a TN panel. Uh, if you spend the majority of your time on the PC doing work or watching movies or anything non-gaming, then I would probably recommend the 1440p over the TN. So it just depends who you are. For me, after spending a good two months using the IPS panel, I found that it start to, started to make my eyes pretty tired. So that's something I did notice. And keep in mind though that the, the 27 inch, man, it was absolutely huge. It was a monster. I sit about 50 centimeters away from my monitor. And I mean, the 27 inch was just massive. I don't see how people can have 32 inch monitors on their desks. I mean, uh, or anything like that so something to keep in mind that the 27 inch was for me I don't want any bigger than a 27 inch I mean it was just huge so I, I can see that monitors keep getting bigger but I think it's starting to get to a, a stop point where people just don't want them any bigger I mean the space just isn't needed so I thought that was interesting and yeah I look forward to getting I'm actually very keen to see the uh, Zeus uh, ROG 1440p TN gaming monitor. That's something I've got my eyes open out for because I'd really like to see what it does. Um, and so that's something else too as well. You, as you guys know, TN doesn't have the um, as good as viewing angles as the IPS monitors. So if you do a lot of time, maybe if you're working in your room and you do a lot of viewing from different angles and you may want to get an IPS panel but if you're like me and you're always facing the front of your monitor then it's not really going to make a difference between TN and IPS I'm always you know I'm always in front of my monitor when I'm using it um, and so viewing angles don't really affect me the advantage of the IPS panel but uh, ultimately though the ghosting was if you ask me would I prefer 120 Hertz and no ghosting 1080p over 1440p and ghosting, the answer for me is yes, I prefer no ghosting, 1080p, 120Hz over 1440p uh, ghosting, that's just me. So that ghosting as well, it doesn't go away, that's inherent to the IPS panel. Even if you clock that to 120Hz, you might even find it might get a little bit worse. So that is inherent to the monitor, so yeah, overclocking that monitor, I mean, it's just IPS technology, it's getting better, it's getting a lot better. 
And I mean, I think one day it will, I mean, obviously it will be better than TN, but as it stands of today, 2014 March, IPS panels aren't better than TN for ghosting. So that's something that I was, yeah, so something I'm kind of left here going, ah, damn, I wish the IPS monitor had no ghosting, then it would be my perfect gaming solution. But um, fortunately, that's not the case. So yeah, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, I'll quickly talk about the Yamakasi monitor after using it for two months, give you guys an update on it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. it. I mean, the screen real estate, wow. It's like there's just more room. I can do so much more work on the 1440p monitor. I mean, it's bigger, and then you've got more res. You've got like almost twice the res, so you can pretty much got double the space. Like when I'm editing videos or when I'm making uh, my thumbnails and stuff like that, there's just it's so much easier to do it on the uh, Korean panel. Watching movies was also a lot better. Uh, however, gaming wasn't as good in my opinion. So that's the trade-offs with IPS versus TN. And I thought the Yamakaze model in particular has been performing pretty well. It hasn't really skipped a beat. I haven't noticed it um, doing anything bad, uh, as you guys can see. Like I haven't noticed my my basically my IPS panel has been performing really well. Uh, so there is one thing I will tell you about it though. And that is that it does sort of, when I've got all, like if I put an all white image up on my screen, it kind of starts to make this little buzzing noise. And apparently that's just some of the parts in the back whining, a bit of coil whine or something like that. It's nothing to worry about. Uh, but ultimately the, the panel is <laughs> exceptional value for money. I mean, it was like 320 USD and I can highly recommend the Korean, Korean panels. And I mean, as you guys saw today, the input lag of the Korean panel was phenomenal. I mean, it was beating my TN panel. So that's that was very impressive. I was surprised when I saw that. So definitely the uh, Koreans definitely know what they're doing when it comes to making monitors. Uh, just the ghosting thing is the only disadvantage. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, uh, please give this video a like. And if you want to see more tech videos, then subscribe to Tech Yes City. Anyways, I will catch you soon. Peace out for now. Bye.